Hey guys, Keys from Wired to Fish, and I'm gonna to talk to you about what I like to look for when I'm fishing small rivers for big smallmouth. This spot behind me is absolutely gorgeous to me because we've got a big riffle, and what that does is make a big depression. And off to the side of that, we've got a big calm eddy. Things are gonna come over that riffle or out of those rapids like a disoriented bait fish. It might fall off of that riffle and spin around in the eddy for a little bit, which is a perfect place for a smallmouth to chomp it. So I'm gonna to try to mimic that by casting into the riffle and then pulling out a little bit and keeping it in the eddy as long as possible. I'm gonna work this entire little eddy from right tight to the rapids to all the way where it starts to almost get white water again. But I'm almost positive there's gonna be a smallmouth in here. So let's give it a whirl. There we go, yes, yes, yes. Yes, that's a good smallie right there. A really good one. Oh, I knew he was sitting there. Right, yes, really nice smallie. Right below that ripple. Oh, he's getting in the current, he's just peeling. Oh boy, oh yes, come on. That is awesome, I knew he was sitting there. Oh, he's in the heavy current. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, baby, nice fish. Yes, yes, yes. Wow, that's fun. Yes. Oh, we got her pinned. Come on, stay with me, you're real nice. We're gentle, we're gonna be kind to you. We're all good, everything's fine. Come here, baby. We got you. Oh, we can't mess around. There it is, there it is. Awesome, what a great fish. I knew there was one sitting there too. Oh, a little persistence. I worked that eddy at a couple different angles and he just happened to be sitting right at the base of the falls, basically. As soon as it hit that, I just gave the line some slack and let it tumble around in that eddy. Awesome, I knew there was gonna be one in there, I love it. See if we can get one on the other side of the river. So tubes have been utilized in bass fishing for a really long time, and they're one of my favorite baits in rivers because of one very important thing, and that is the width and stoutness of their body. They're very short and fat, and they act really well in the current. I can bomb a pretty good cast with the spinning reel with them, but like I said, most importantly, I can let this thing float behind a boulder really well. I can jut it up and then let it float back and jut it up and let it float back. This thing has got the weight to just hang in the current a little bit. So this is almost the perfect little torpedo shape for hanging in the current and trying to get an ambushing smallmouth to come out and smack it. I mean, if you can fish tight to this ripple, there's gonna be another one sitting there. Another one, another one on the other side. Come on, oh, oh yes. It's not a giant, but he was just chilling on the other side. Nice, nice. Come on, son. Come on, friend. Oh, I love it when they get in the current. Yes, come on, baby. Look at that. Oh boy. <laughs> Working every side of the ripple really pays off. Come on, sir. And we got such tiny mouths. There we go. All right. He was barely hooked. Bonked another smallie there. It's just awesome working him out of this thin water. Okay, well I'm gonna work that again a little more efficiently and get another one. Smoke that tube. Come on. There he goes. So what I wanted to mention was using braided line in this situation. Like these fish are getting in that current quick or they're hitting the bait while it's in the current. And I'm gonna need every non-stretch capability that I have to keep them pinned. So this 10 pound braid is thin enough to where it's not getting pushed around by the current, but it's strong enough and lacks the stretch where I can keep them pinned. Keeping my tip up and my line off the water. This tube is just barely under the surface of the water just lackadaisically floating around in the current. There's another one, I knew it, right there, yes! Yes, I knew there was an, oh, he popped off in that current. He popped off in the current. Oh, that's all right, it's always satisfying kind of knowing that there's gonna be another one in a different section of that riffle. I caught that first nice one at the head of the riffle and I worked the bait down to where the riffle eventually spills off and it becomes shallow again. So there's a shelf under there with the current and that's definitely where they're gonna be hiding there was that time. In this fishing situation, in this fish, oh there he is, I knew it, oh, 
always let it just hang in the current perfectly. Oh boy. Oh boy. I don't I didn't sting him. I think I can get him. This thing is really after it. <laughs> I've missed a couple. We're at least putting it in front of their face. And it's just gonna take some adjustment by me. Pick up the line a little bit quicker. Oh, there he is. Yes, I got him, I got him, I got him this time. I knew it. Oh, it's another good one too. Oh yes, nice jump. God, we capitalized on him. See, I learned from my mistakes and I got that one to commit and I was able to stay pinned on it. Nice, another thin river smallmouth. Come here, baby, squirrely. They're my favorite. Oh, oh, nice, there we go. See what I mean? I just made those slight adjustments. I was missing fish. I gave it a little bit more time when I felt him eat it and I picked up a lot more line. Like I said, when your line gets in the current, your line will get ahead of your bait a little bit. That means you've got some slack that you have to pick up. And a lot of times that means a missed hook set. Oh, his old knock has got it just pinned. Another cutie, I'll let her go. Oh yes, 